I had a bit of an epiphany a, a, a couple of years ago when I had a paper cut. And I realized, actually, I wasn't going to consciously heal that. Something was going to work behind the scenes and uh, knit it back together and put a little scab on, and then that was going to fall off and there would be new skin. But I wasn't going to consciously sit there and go, I'm going to fix this paper cut. As long as I didn't sit there and open, keep it open or stick stuff in it or whatever, it was going to heal itself, you know? So the body has this inner intelligence, this natural capability and ability to, to heal itself, and will do so whenever given the chance. And that's the trick, whenever given the chance. It's also important to recognize, though, that the body isn't designed to self-destruct. Do you know what I mean? The body and mind are very much interconnected. They're, they're, they're very much one. There isn't a body and a mind. There's a, the body-mind. Okay? There's nowhere where you really see the, the body end and the mind begin and vice versa. The physical manifestation of thoughts found in every cell of the body and the impact of our beliefs and emotions are impacting every single cell of our body. And I'll, I'll talk, explain a bit about that, why that's possible actually in a minute. But the most important thing to recognize is that our body isn't against us, it's actually trying to survive. That was the biggest thing that turned things around for myself and, and helping other people heal their physical conditions. And we've helped people heal uh, conditions with, from skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis or acne, um, chronic uh, fatigue or migraines and headaches, eyesight, IBS, either that's constipation or um, going a bit too much. Um, uh, even things like acid reflux, heartburn, NE. Uh, hearing problems, uh, pain, chronic pain is an amazing, we have amazing success with, success with that. So I've seen people instantaneously heal in front of my eyes. So my, my, my convincer is really high right now because <laughs> I've had over 600 one-on-one -on -one <laughs> sessions in the last four years because of, I've basically been living out a suitcase touring around the world and um, doing this ever since it started working for people. And so I, I've seen in my own eyes that the body is able to heal itself and will do so whenever given the chance. And it thinks the current things that are happening with your body is the best option available at this point in time to keep you alive. Now I know that might be, you might seem counterproductive, that it's like, how can this psoriasis be good for me? You know, you know what psoriasis is? Anyone heard of that? It's like this, uh, yeah, it's an excess of sk skin cells, right? But what I found, for example, doing my, um, my work with people that have healed psoriasis is that it links often with a, a, a sense of external attack. The root cause reason often links with external attack, okay? So what happens is the body, to protect itself from that external attack, and bear in mind the skin is the last layer of defense, grows an extra layer of defense to try and protect itself. Isn't that amazing? Because I, how do I know this? Because the people that I've worked with who had had uh, psoriasis, the trend was that they had been feeling bullied, or, or physically actually been bullied, or they'd had some sort of external attack near-death experience or whatever. Isn't that amazing? When we resolve that fear of external attack, the body goes, ah, oh, I can relax. And it goes back to balance. It goes back to equilibrium. equilibrium. <laughs> Basically, the skin cells just aren't required anymore. If there's no reason for it to be there, then they won't, they won't be there anymore. I had one client who, I tell you, a client, it was a, a friend of mine, we were sitting, uh, having a chat. He was smoking a cigarette um, in Mexico. And we're having this five minute conversation and he happens to mention, because he knows what I do, that um, he's had really sluggish bowels for the last 30 years, you know. And uh, I was like, well, asked him the, 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 the mind you questions and he found an event in his past where um, he actually had an accident when he was a kid, you know. He, he shouldn't have gone and he went. Um, and it was a really traumatic, embarrassing experience and it was like he learned that it, was, it wasn't safe to go to the toilet. It's so, it be, sometimes it can be as simple as that. And so the body then responded and he, when, we, when he realized that, and he realized it is safe to go to the toilet, it's actually safer to go to the toilet and not go to the toilet, he started laughing. But more importantly, he actually had to leave and immediately go to the toilet. <laughs> I kid you not, over the next month he lost a stone in weight without changing his diet in the slightest, slightest, slightest weight. Um, I uh, had another lady come up to me uh, a couple... Um, uh, a couple of years ago now, and I was standing at a, uh, a Body and Soul Fair in Edinburgh, something like this actually, um, and uh, she came up to my stall and she says, I hear you do this mind-body healing thing. I'm like, uh-huh, well, how can I help? She's like, well, a couple of years ago, um, I had a car accident and I've still got a very painful back. I can't do yoga and I'm on painkillers constantly. And, and, I, and I was like, well, that sounds like a physical thing. You had a car accident. 
because I wanted to find out if she was open to a mental or emotional cause. She was like, no, no, but my boyfriend um, was in the car too, and his back's fine, so I, I want to find out if there's something else. And so I looked around and thought, well, there's no one really talking to me right now, so I asked her the, the, the Mind the Optimist Method questions, and uh, she found an event, she gave me permission to share a story. Um, she found an event when she was like six or seven, where, where her dad was uh, taken into hospital. And when I explored a bit further, her root cause reason was that she felt sad, scared, and uh, vulnerable, dad disappeared. That was her root cause reason, which is a little sentence. And so then she burst out crying. And everyone, then people start walking around seeing that this person's crying with me, and they're looking at me thinking I'm a terrible therapist, right? <laughs> and so I go, okay, come here. So we sit down behind my stall, and we, we ask her the next couple of questions, and she releases it and takes it from a 10 out of 10 down to a zero, and it feels resolved. And so we resolved that, and uh, we have this little therapy session, and she's, she, oh, she says, thanks, thanks very much, I feel much better now. She gets up and leaves, doesn't even buy a bloody book, but anyway. <laughs> I'm over that now. <laughs> but uh, what is required is often for the person to have a paradigm shift, where they, they're seeing the world at one, in one way, and they need to start seeing it in a different way, because the way, the way they're currently seeing it isn't working for them. All right? And so what I see, I do see a big difference between the clients that come and are ready for a shift in consciousness, a, a shift in seeing living differently. They've gone, you know what? The way I'm doing things isn't working. My body or my life, my finances or whatever is the evidence for that and I actually am willing to do something about it. So they're not just wanting like a quick fix. Do you know what I mean? They want to like, have that initial kick start and then they're going to do stuff to, to maintain the results. Yeah? Well, what I do, is it sustainable was the question. What I do, personally, is I take a two-pronged approach to helping people. So, initially they'll come to me to help to change their mind, using the Mind Yokes method, and then I'll teach them the form of meditation that I'm a teacher of, which helps them to change the relationship with their mind and experience much more ongoing peace and, and reduce the stress in their life. So they're both changing the mind and changing the relationship with the mind, and that's why I see gives them the long-term long -term gain. Because the same mind that tells you you're having a good day today can come around and see something tomorrow that might say that you're really nervous or whatever, right? But it's just a pattern, it's a thought, a neurological uh, pathway in your brain that energy is flowing th through and the, and the thought is that thought. But it's not actually necessarily accurate anymore. So the person needs to be able to see that thought and go, well, actually, that's just a thought. I don't actually have to act upon it. And so changing relationship with your mind is really important as well in, in the long-term game. Okay, just while we're on the topic of unconscious mind, I just want to mention, but not go into detail, that we have a perfect memory. Okay, we don't necessarily have a perfect recall of that memory. We don't need one, but if asked the correct questions, you can go in, and your body will, your your mind will just give you the answer. And so, when you're having the experience of the mind detox method, what happens is the questions the practitioners are taught to ask them in a way that don't let you think, and give you and give us your first answer. And that way, we can get to to the the thing. So, if anyone's thinking, going. I don't think I would know what event happened in my life. Did it? Don't worry about it. The, the questions are for you. You just need to be willing to, to sit back, relax, and see the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, guys? I know that's a thought that tends to stick in lots of people's heads and it distracts people from this talk, so I'm just going to put it out now. <laughs>